So I guess our big question today is, can prayer actually lead to like more abundance, you know, financially speaking, or is that just, I don't know, wishful thinking? It's a question worth exploring, that's for sure. Welcome, dear listeners, to another episode of the Clarence Stores Leadership Podcast. Floor the transformative power of prayer. Have you ever felt like your prayers were just hitting the ceiling and not reaching the presence of God? Welcome to the Clarence Stores Leadership Podcast, a podcast about becoming 1% better every day. And now your host, yours truly, Clarence Stores. Hello, dear listeners. I'm Clarence Edward Stores Jr., host of the Clarence Stores Leadership Podcast. Today's episode explores the idea that financial breakthroughs often start with a change in how we pray. Today's hosts will guide you, the listener, to understand that while practical steps like budgeting are important, bold prayer can be the most powerful tool for overcoming financial challenges. Our hosts emphasize that God desires to provide abundantly and that he often exceeds our expectations when we fully trust him. They will discuss common fears that can hold us back from praying boldly for financial breakthroughs, such as fear of asking for too much or doubting God's willingness to answer. As a listener, you will be encouraged to identify and overcome these fears, recognizing that bold prayers are a demonstration of faith and trust in God's power. This episode will also address the importance of aligning faith with action. Our hosts will skillfully outline practical steps for financial stewardship, such as creating a budget, seeking financial advice, and practicing generosity. They will remind listeners, you, that God often works through our actions and combining prayer with practical steps, allows us to fully experience his provision. And we'll draw upon biblical figures like Job and illustrate how perseverance and unwavering faith are key to witnessing financial breakthroughs. All hosts will also encourage you to remain steadfast in your prayers trusting in God's perfect timing, even when results don't appear immediately. Ultimately, this episode aims to inspire you to shift your focus from lack to trust in God's abundant provision. In the end, you'll offer guidance on how to pray boldly and specifically for financial needs, believing that God is ready and willing to answer these prayers. I am excited, and I trust that you are excited as well. So sit back, get comfortable, grab something to write with, something to write on, lean in, take copious notes, and let's all get 1% better. I'll see you on the inside. Hey, everyone. Welcome back for another deep dive. Today, we're digging into something that I think a lot of us have probably wondered about at some point, the connection between faith and finances. Yeah, definitely. It's one of those topics that tends to spark a lot of questions. It really does. So we've got two interesting sources lined up. One is like a guidebook on praying for financial breakthroughs. And then we've got this blog post that's kind of reflecting on a sermon about the same thing. So I guess our big question today is, can prayer actually lead to like 
more abundance, you know, financially speaking, or is that just, I don't know, wistful thinking? It's a question worth exploring, that's for sure. Yeah, totally. And one thing that both of these sources mention right away is this idea of bold prayer. They actually both use that phrase, bold prayer. So it's not just like hoping for the best. It's about coming to God with confidence about our financial needs. And what's interesting there is that the idea of boldness, it's not about, you know, trying to force God's hand or anything like that. It's more about aligning ourselves, aligning our beliefs with this understanding that God wants to bless us. Right. Like it's already there. Exactly. And it's not even like a new concept, really, you know? Uh-huh. I mean, the guide, the guide even uses Job from the Bible as an example. Oh, right, Job. He went through like the worst possible losses. But then when he finally had that breakthrough, he didn't just get back what he lost. He got double. Double. Yeah. Which is pretty bold return when you think about it. Yeah. And it kind of gets at this idea of, you know, an abundance mentality, like believing that God's resources, they're not limited. They're limitless, really. Yeah. But we have to align ourselves with that abundance through faith. So it's not about asking for like a specific dollar amount. It's more about coming from a place of believing that God can provide even more than we can imagine. Exactly. It's about expanding our own capacity to receive by by shifting from this mindset of scarcity to a mindset of abundance. Okay, that makes sense. This actually reminds me of something from that blog post. It was talking about how the size of our prayers can often reflect, like, the size of our faith. So does that mean, like, if I'm praying for help with a small bill, is my faith somehow smaller than someone who's praying for a million-dollar business deal or something? That's a great question, and it really highlights a misconception I think a lot of people have. It's not about the scale of the request necessarily. It's more about the limits that we place on God's power. If we truly believe that God can do anything, like part the Red Sea, move mountains, then why do we hesitate to bring those seemingly impossible requests to him, even in the area of finances? I guess because deep down, maybe we don't really believe it's possible. Maybe we have these hidden doubts that we haven't really confronted because boldness in prayer, it requires us to face those fears, you know, acknowledge those doubts and then move forward in faith anyway. And, you know, that brings us to something else that both of these sources talk about, which is uh, the fear and the doubt that can come up when we're praying specifically about money. It's almost like, I don't know. It can feel kind of taboo sometimes, can it? Oh, totally. Like we're being too materialistic or something. Right. Exactly. Like we should be focusing on like higher things. Yeah. Yeah. I've definitely felt that before. Like who am I to be asking for financial help when there are, you know, bigger problems in the world? Right. And it's a valid feeling for sure. But I think what both of these sources do is they acknowledge that our finances, they they are part of our lives, right? Like our ability to provide for ourselves and our families, to give to things that we care about, it all kind of comes back to to our financial well-being in some way. So how do we get over that hump, that that hesitation to actually bring those needs to God? Well, both of them actually mention that verse from James James 4.2. You do not have, it says, because you do not ask. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Because maybe sometimes we're just we're standing in our own way. Exactly. Sometimes it's not like God withholding. It's us not even asking or not asking with that boldness that we were talking about earlier. Right. Right. Okay. (laughs) So let's say like we're praying boldly. We're believing in God's abundance. We're facing our fears, all that. Does that mean we just like sit back and wait for a miracle? That's where it gets really interesting, I think, because both sources are very clear that prayer, it's not a magic solution. Like, it doesn't mean we don't take action. Right. It's not about, like, not doing anything. Exactly. It's not about replacing action. It's about it's about fueling it, I guess, giving it direction. Yeah, I like that because it's easy to fall into that trap of thinking, okay, I prayed about it. So now it's just going to magically work out. But both of these sources, they also talk about, like, practical steps we can take, like, you know, creating a budget, maybe talking to a financial advisor. Yeah. All those things that, you know, might seem obvious, but sometimes we avoid them. Because they take effort. And that's where I think this idea of like faith and action working together comes in. It's like saying, God, I trust you to provide. And I'm also going to do my part to be wise with what you've given me. It's like that partnership. That's what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what else I thought was interesting? As far as action goes, you know, one thing they both mention is generosity. Oh, wow. 
which when you think about it, it seems kind of counterintuitive, right? Like right. you're trying to improve your own financial situation. Exactly. But they both talk about this paradox, you yeah. know, because when we give, even if we don't feel like we have a lot to give, it can actually shift our mindset from that scarcity to abundance. It's like an act of faith. Like we're saying, God, I trust you to provide even as I'm, I'm opening my hands to bless others. It's like saying, OK, I trust you enough to share, even if it's not a ton, knowing that you're going to take care of things. Yeah. And that trust in itself, you know, it brings its own kind of abundance. You know, it made me think of something else that both these sources brought up, kind of shifting gears a little bit when we talk about financial breakthroughs. Oh, OK. They both mentioned uh, Frederick Douglass mm. and how he, you know, he prayed so fervently for freedom from slavery. And yeah, eventually his freedom led to financial stability. But like his initial prayer wasn't about money. You know, about something way bigger. Exactly. It was about liberation from like a system that was holding him back on every level. So his breakthrough, it wasn't just financial. It was like this profound freedom. And I think that's such a good point for us to remember, because sometimes I know I get caught up in like the number in my bank account, you know, <laughs> and you forget that there are all these other kinds of abundance that we can be praying for, too. Absolutely. Peace of mind stronger relationships, growing spiritually, like those are all part of living an abundant life too, right? right? Totally, totally. So as we kind of wrap up here for our listeners who are maybe wanting to start praying for financial breakthroughs in their own lives, what would you say are like the main takeaways from these sources? Well, I think the biggest thing is it's not about like begging God or anything like that. It's about coming to him boldly, being specific about what we need and having that unwavering faith that he wants to bless us abundantly. Yeah. And even if that blessing doesn't look like you know, winning the lottery or whatever. It could be something that we never expected. Right? Exactly. It could be a new job that just like falls into your lap. It could be this creative solution to a debt problem or even just honestly the peace of mind to make it through a tough financial season. Just recognizing. Yeah. Recognizing those blessings when they show up, however they show up. Yes. 100 percent. And trusting the timing. Yeah. Well said. Well, as we wrap up today, I think we're left with this great question. What is that financial need that you need to bring to God? And are you ready to trust to trust his timing and his provision, even if it looks a little different than you pictured it? That's something to think about. Definitely is. Well, thanks for joining us for this deep dive. Until next time, everyone. You've been listening to the Clarence Stores Leadership Podcast. Join us next time for more insights on becoming 1% better each day and leveling up in all areas of life.